Okay, so in my last video, I talked about why I stopped hooking up with strangers, and I ended it on a cliffhanger where I ended up feeling really weird after having a sexual encounter with a girl. However, I will not be saving you from that cliffhanger today. In fact, I want to save you from this other cliff that I put you on last time. The story about my ex. See, if we rewind a little bit, I said this. But I can say what she did had me crying in a hallway at 2 a.m. in the morning. So, yeah, we're gonna be a hoe now. So yeah, let's explore that trauma. Trust me, it's necessary to get you off of this cliff. We gotta get you all that one. All right, but before I continue to tell you about my poor decision-making skills, I gotta talk to you about your potential poor smelling good picking skills. That makes sense? No, you'll see in a second. Because according to the whole Bible, if you want to be a hoe, the number one thing you have to do is like not stink. I feel like that is, is pretty intuitive. But it's not your fault, future hoe, because what most people don't realize is that how you take care of yourself should be tailored to you. Would you use the same prescription glass as me just because you're nearsighted? Nah. So that's why this video is sponsored by the amazing folks over at Hawthorne. The easiest way to get premium quality hair, skin, and smell good items. So you can go out to the world and be a hub. And a clean one at that. So all you gotta do is go to their website and answer some questions about you. What type of skin you have, what type of hair you have. And after that quiz, they will literally send you a box of your essentials tailored for you. I've been using Hawthorne since my last integration and I'm genuinely a fan. Like, like it arrived at my crib the other day. My roommate also borrowed mine, even though it's not tailored to him and he likes it. Mads, don't you use my Hawthorne stuff? Yeah, okay. All right, that's all I needed, cool. And not to mention, they have data that knows when to send you refills. These don't just come, they come when I need them. I, and most importantly, by checking them out, you support the channel, and that really helps because I, I need bills paid. <laughs> so you can try them out by using my link in the description, taking the quiz, and using the code KurtRitchie to get 10% off your first order. So once again, go on over to Hawthorne, use the code KurtRitchie for 10% off your first order. Okay, anyways, continuing on. Now this girl that I'm talking about has been the thesis of a lot of problems in a lot of my videos. But specifically, she was the center of my why lonely people shouldn't get in relationships video. So we were both lonely and we shouldn't have got into a relationship. Yeah, it kind of speaks for itself, you know. So after we broke up, you know, that should have been it, you know, bon voyage. But why do that when we could just cause more problems for ourselves see here's the thing about loneliness that i didn't put together when you break up with someone even if it wasn't a good match there's always this hole someone you knew personally who knew you for the person you are is out there like living and whatnot and although my first instinct is to kill them for knowing too much about me oddly enough you missed that connection having that closeness with someone even if it didn't work out you still have that deep familiarity and i didn't want to lose that which is very stupid way of thinking. It's like being hungry and then looking in your fridge and finding like eight week old like guacamole in there and thinking, yo, at least we have some food. Like, no, you might die. It is a net positive to go hungry right now than to eat this guac. Like, don't do it yet. <laughs> well, that's past me, so we continued to talk to each other. So after some time of texting each other, we kind of figured, hey, maybe we should try again. Maybe we didn't do enough. This definitely isn't just lonely. All right, so first couple days back into college is about our sophomore semester. Me and some buddies are at this housewarming party because, you know, it's back to school. We're all sad that we're doing this again. And I tell the girl that shan't be named that I'd like her to come because we're definitely on that level. I don't know. Maybe I just wanted to prove something to myself that we are friends and I have no emotional detachment. So I was like, hey, why don't you come? Because, you know, old relationships and alcohol always go well. Now, I'm going to this party with some really good buddies. Of mine. And I tell my people and a good friend of mine, we'll call him Tim, to not let me sleep with her or do anything because you know alcohol is involved. And my rule is now back in motion. If you weren't paying attention from the last video, I have a personal rule where I won't do anything outside of a relationship. And we are no longer in that, so that it, it does not fly anymore. It's a no-fly zone. You can't zip down my my fly. It's no, we can't. And they say for show, sure, Tim especially. Cool. Thank you guys. You're good buddies. Yeah. So the party goes on and I get like gone. Yo, like so gone. You know, we're drinking, having a good time. And as the party progresses, she drags me into a room. And like very anime style. What's the cocky bone? When they put the, the arm on the thing, she does that to me like so you having a good time. What is what is happening? I should fuck right now. That was a quick thing from a hello. Um now, like I said, alcohol's involved. So rationale. Not the best, but despite all that, I still said no. 
wild. I know. So we leave the room, and I'm like, man, good for you, Kurt. You've done the right thing. I'm so proud of you. What is she doing? All of a sudden, she starts walking over to Tim and getting a little more friendly with him. Goes over to him, sits in his lap, starts grinding on him. Yo! Whoa! Like, okay, um, man, never have I felt like a piece of meat before. I thought it'd be a lot cooler, but no, this is... Huh, like a genuine replacement. I That hurt. In fact, she even kisses him on the cheek. I, I know I said don't let me sleep with her, but you uh, feel like bro code insists that you also, but I, you know what, it's cool. It's fine, I, it's fine. It's not like anything crazy would happen. It's cool. I'm, I'm salty the entire time, but you know, nothing will go wrong. It's no big deal. She's technically single. You know, she can do what she wants. So, you know, it is what it is. Now the party finishes up and the room's empty and I'm spending the night at this spot. I am too drunk to leave. I, I can't do it. <laughs> I go in a room because I am gone. I get into bed and I start to close my eyes thinking about how wild that night was and what she did. But you know, things could have been worse. And I start to close my eyes. I hear something. Mm. That voice. What? What the? Mm. That voice sounds familiar. It's, it was coming from the wall across from the bed I was sleeping in. So I went closer put my ear up on the wall hoping what I heard isn't what I think it was because across from that room was where I knew Tim was sleeping mm. but that wasn't Tim's voice that was a voice I knew a little too well mm. it's Tim and the girl who won't be named having sex One million thoughts are raising through my head. I could pound on the wall, scream, whatever, but I just didn't have the energy. I couldn't go to sleep hearing that. I thought about what I could do, and all I could do was feel hopeless. Obviously, I couldn't sleep, so I left the apartment and went out to the hallway of the complex and just sat in the corner and started crying. You know the term, cry yourself to sleep? I didn't know that was like some real shit until you, I actually did it. I ended up crying myself until I fell asleep there in the hallway. I woke up about two hours later. It's maybe like four or five a.m. And I walk back hoping this man does not have this level of stamina. Dear God, that would really be unfortunate. And I go back in the room and I don't hear anything anymore. My heart doesn't feel anything anymore either. So yeah, yeah it's a cop out. And the next day, I heard a knock on the door in the room I was sleeping in. It was her, ready to apologize, saying, I'm sorry, but I couldn't. I just told her to leave me alone. Cause I was hurt. I was broken. We were trying. We were trying again. And this happened. I didn't know what to do. And that's when I realized if she was going to sleep with whoever, then I was too. I'm going to do what she did to me. Because it's only right. It's only fair. And that is my whole origin story. Like a fucking super villain. Dear God. But as we all know, that didn't lead to the best results. In fact, led to me probably messing my life up more than I did before. But that's for next time. Oh, what's up, y'all? Yo, uh, I am dying, so this will be a very quick uh, outro. What's good? Um, If you like that video, as always, uh, please check out the last one. You might enjoy it because they were made by the same person, me. Big things are coming starting next video. When the video coming out, who knows? When I, when I ever post, I want to give a big, Thank you to all my patrons though, uh, who are scrolling currently. Like, especially as we move into something that'll be coming soon. Y'all are a big help. And if you wanna have a hint at what's coming, join the Patreon, give me money, I'm poor. Thank you. That's really all I got. I'm dying inside. That's you tunes. And we're out. Peace.